Hey guys, it's Robin, Arizona Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you all the progress that I've gotten on anything crafty I've done for the week, whether I've touched it for just a little bit or I've worked on it long enough to actually finish it. I think I only have one finish for you this week, and that's okay. I'm going to start out with my dishcloth. This is the same dishcloth. I think I've been working on it for a couple weeks now. Uh, yeah, I just don't really get to it that much right now. I have so many other little projects. I may get back to doing washcloths. I would really like to get some more done so I can use them as gifts or to put them in the shop, as I've said repeatedly. I'm sure I'll get back to doing dishcloths eventually. It's just one of those things that comes and goes. My one and only not so big finish of the week is my, oh, my, my quilt as you go scrappy herringbone quilt. The only thing I had left to do was to put on the binding. I went ahead and I used this little, let's see if we could see it. I used a, I think it's a light gray thread, so it's hard to see. Let me see over here, maybe. It's this little heartbeat pattern that I call it. It's kind of like a buttonhole stitch, except it has these V's instead of a straight line. I really like how that goes on there. You do get it because of the way I pull my binding over. I do get this extra line across the back like that. It doesn't really bother me. A lot of times when there's quilting all over, you don't really notice it. It is a little more noticeable now, but with the gray thread, it's not too bad. Now I have washed it so you can see that it has gotten, it looks well loved and crinkly. So that's really good. And I did like the way that turned out because we are, I did do the, you know, as we're stitching it down through here. So technically it's quilted all the way through here. The problem I had was with the back. You see how, because there's nothing holding the back, I put the back to the front, if you remember, and then I just did my quilting down this way, and then two lines of quilting across. The whole block, the six and a half by 12 and a half, well, it comes out six by 12, there's nothing holding this to the part that I quilted to the front of the quilt. So I end up with this loosey-goosey stuff back here. Now, I know that's basically, some quilts have been like that in the past, and it's about a stylish, I guess. But I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I know I'm not really a big fan of that, and I would prefer to have it quilted completely. I like to quilt my quilts to death. I, I feel like sometimes they'll hold together better that way and last more if you're going to wash it more. But so you see I have this. And overall, it's not too bad. But then when you get down to the lighter fabrics... You really can kind of see. Now I stretched it nice and tight and I put pins everywhere. One of my, my problems though, as a suggestion for you guys who are doing this and haven't gotten to it yet, when you before you put your binding on, I was planning on doing it, but I totally spaced out and didn't do it. Do a stay stitch around the edge because while my quilting held it here, or at least put some pins in it, my my there's no quilting here so this piece was just flopping like this so i had to make sure i went like this to catch it otherwise i would just have some when i put my binding on there would be some batting sticking out and i didn't want that to happen so i had to make sure i keep pulling it down and it worked out okay but still there's all this loose fabric in here don't really like that I think if you were doing these the six inch blocks like this, then it would be better. You wouldn't have all that excess, but because it's a rectangle like this, I have that. Now, it might be suggested that I go back and just add some more quilting to it, but if I were to add some quilting, if it didn't feed properly, I'd end up with some folds and tucks everywhere. And then if I, you know how you see how it's just kind of moving and leaving those ripples? I really don't want that effect either. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And it's going to be a crinkly, well-loved quilt. And it's still going to work fine as a quilt. But as an appearance for me personally, I don't think I'm going to do this with the rectangles again. I may try it again with some squares. Definitely not 12-inch squares, something smaller. And see how that works. But there's plenty of other quilt-as-you-go techniques out there that I can try. I don't have to stick with just this one, so it'll be fine. But this is done. Now I have to determine whether I not whether or not I think anyone would want to purchase it and put it in my shop after I get rid of all the extra fuzzies. I haven't gone through and defuzzed it yet after being washed. Because you know they always have little pieces of thread here and there. So I have to do that still. Then I have to decide whether or not I want to put it in the shop, uh, maybe give it to someone, 
or just let the animals have it. I worked very little on my miter square blanket. As I was mentioning earlier, I listen to an audiobook in the morning, and that allows me to go ahead and knit. Sometimes I watch the news, but I've gotten so used to watching things on Netflix and Hulu that the commercials annoy me. I don't want to wait. I am got to the point where, just come on, get on with it. I only have so much time in a day. I ain't got time for commercials. I'm not going to buy whatever you're advertising anyway, so let's get a move on, right? I need to find a new audiobook. I was reading or listening to the Dragonian series. I don't remember who it's by. If I remember, I'll go ahead and put it down there. Or if I remember to put it down there, that is. But otherwise, like I said, I was listening to the books, and then I finished. So now I didn't get many squares done because this is the project that I knit on in the morning. I have this nice gray one. Here's that rainbow one I was working on last week. And I've barely not even started but one row of this camo-y green army type color. Swamp green is what I like to call it. I think that is all. Or snaps. That is all. Yep. So I'm still trying to get through to get this corner done. But I'm not getting very far because, like I said, I only pick it up in the morning. It's just, that's where I have it slated to work on this project. Some mornings I'm actually getting to sleep a little and other mornings I have to rush around. So it's just one of those things that get kicked to the side a lot. But hey, I got two squares done, right? I was hoping to get seven done every week when I showed it, but two squares is still progress. This might be a little wild and crazy for a sweater, but it sure would make some nice mitts or a hat. I've made some progress on my pumpkin. As I was pressing my different fabrics out and everything, my crayon, the more I pressed as I was building out this project, my crayon coloring just kept getting, it just got lighter and lighter and lighter till I only had some orange here. So I went ahead and I recolored it and now I'm not happy with the way it was colored as compared to before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with some steam and some more of that color will fade down and then it'll be fine. I had this pumpin, pumpkin fabric. I had some just scraps of it left over from a fat quarter from another project and it just happened to work out perfectly that I had these pumpkins upright and then these pumpkins had strips cut up upright. So I went ahead and popped that on there. And then I had this fabric and I thought, well, that fabric is gonna look great on the back. So I think I'm gonna do the, I don't think I'm gonna do a facing on this one. I might, but I think I might just do the technique where you, after I quilt this, you put them right sides together and then flip them out and then stitch around the edge. I'm not sure. Actually, no, I mean, I'm sure. I definitely want to quilt it all the way through the back, so I'm going to have to figure out something, either a facing or some binding, probably a facing then. Thank you, guys. You let me talk through my, prob my problems. But I think I was going to hand quilt in here until I received so generously that new sewing machine that's going to allow me to easily do some type of quilting inside of here. I knew with the Singer that it was going to be hard for me to, you know, do some straight lines and skip over the embroidery but I think with the new machine I might test out the the free motion foot and just do some free motion around here and then maybe just do some straight line quilting on these edges I might even test out some of the numerous quilting designs it has in there I think this is a good project because this one's gonna stay at home with me and if I use an orange thread or even a green for the vines the green will pop a little more but the orange will blend in and then I can practice some quilting stitches and it won't be like, ah, if it doesn't look right. So that is my fun pumpkin. This is from the Supermom No Cape blog. As I said before, she puts up free embroidery patterns on a regular basis. I can't, still can't remember if it's weekly or monthly. I just follow her on Instagram and when she puts up something fun, I just go to her blog and check it out. I've been feeling guilty and starting to worry about Robbie's socks getting done before Christmas, so I have picked them up just a little bit. Did I work on this one? Nope, still haven't worked on that one. But this one I did get a little bit. I got from here to here all this big chunk of gray, but when you spin it around, it's a big chunk of purple. It's just doing this weird spiral thing. It's kind of strange because the spiral, this is the same number of stitches from this point up I do uh, there's 38 on each needle so there's 76 and my tension is still about the same but however it was dyed 
the yarn looks like this so you're kind of expecting it to do some type of a stripe it's nice and sort of stripey in a spiral here but then all of a sudden I got this big chunk of gray now that would have been nice if it landed on the heel but it's right here it will be the bottom of the foot so it's not going to really matter and Robbie doesn't care he'll like that big chunk of purple on the front so it'll be fine kind of curious to see if the other sock is going to do the same thing when I knit Robbie socks I just kind of use my own little vanilla sock pattern I know what works for his feet and eventually like I say I'll get to the flegal heel and things will be great I've got to get them done in time for Christmas because those are the socks that he does know he's getting and the rest are a surprise and they're already done this box is here to show you that I am going to be making some memory bears I'm going to go ahead and put up a picture of the befores and that is a if anyone's familiar with Scooby-Doo and you're a Scooby-Doo fan or your kids are there was one Halloween costume where Scooby was dressed in this purple velour suit and I think he was supposed to be like a pimp with this hat I think it was a tiger stripe hat like this I mean a zebra stripe hat so the this is for the gentleman that passed away about a year or so ago his mom wanted me to make memory bears she wants one for her and then three for the grandchildren that are already here and then one for the grandchild that's due in a few months so I have five memory bears to make and this is the fabric I'm using so I have this costume let me put a picture up of the jammies And these are the jammies this is a it's not silk I don't I would doubt that it's silk but it's that feel to it and then I have this cotton scooby-doo fabric from the jammy pants now I've gone ahead and I've taken everything apart I split the seams and I left I didn't take all the seams because I thought if I needed to bigger pieces with the bears I didn't think it would have a problem with some bear parts having a seam already there It'll depend on how I'm going to try to not use the seams, but if I have to, it'll be there. And then it has these, this is from the, the flare of the, the bell bottom pants that has that part in it. And it had the lapels going down the front and then a big old collar of the same black and white material. This is, I think it was going to be a stretch but they put this this backing thing on it like but this is going to work really good for the bears but for the rest of them just in case since especially the blue cotton pants these are kind of been loved because daniel really really loved them this is daniel that i made the memory quilts for the t-shirt quilts so i'm going to go ahead and put some of the fusible interfacing on the back of these just to help stabilize it and to help strengthen it when the kids are using the bears and playing with them and I'm sure they're going to get washed. I don't know if anyone I think no I think they have a 13 year old and that's the oldest and then it goes all the way down to the baby to be born and then a five or six year old and then maybe a nine or ten year old. So most of the kids aren't going to need to wash their bears that often. I'm sure they're just going to sleep with them or keep them on a shelf but that's what I'm going to be working on for the next couple weeks. I didn't get to work on my sweater as much as I hoped. I did pick it up a few times, but I didn't actually work on it very much. So yeah, I've got four rows done. So I, I didn't get very far. I just started my first row of the black. I'll do one more row of black and then I'll start getting into the orange. I didn't even have a chance to sit down and weave in the ends yet. But I had a little bit of work, right? Once again, a little bit each week, we'll get it finished eventually. Since there's no deadline on it, I don't feel forced to pick it up. Plus, like I said, it's such that long thing. The next time I'm definitely going to knit a cardigan in the round and then just steak it where you cut it up the front and then do special techniques. I think that's going to make it go a lot faster because I won't have to stop and purl. And I can just knit 20, 30, 50 stitches and easily set it down where this time I kind of feel like I have to knit a whole row. It just makes it easier to keep your needle secure and not lose any stitches. I'm going to show you one more knitting project and then save my sewing one for the very end. This is a three color cashmere cowl I've been working on for a gift for a friend. 
I had just gotten into the second red stripe and now I'm all the way up here. So I've added one, two, three, four, five, six more rounds, uh, six more double rounds of stripes. So that's like 12 rounds of knitting. So that's pretty good. This is the one I've been trying to pick up the most because it's probably about, I might be at the halfway point soon. I, I should be at the halfway point when I hit the end of these and there'll be 18 or 19 stripes when I hit the end of this section. It just seems like I don't know if I had a busy week, but I feel like I had a busy week and that there was always something happening and I never picked up my projects as much as I wanted to. But as I'm showing to you, I have shown progress on everything. So I have dabbled, but I haven't seemed to get any big chunks. I, I've been playing catch up a lot. Now this past Sunday, I didn't have that whole day like I usually do to work on my projects. So that's what kind of set me off. So my last project is my wonky log cabins. On Saturday, I just had to play with that new machine. I just wanted to spend some time on it. It when you get something nice like that, you don't want to just let it sit there and do other things. And I thought, forget it. I I, w I didn't answer any comments on YouTube. I didn't do my normal schedule. Didn't do any other crafting. I just played with the sewing machine. You can't blame me, right? So I just went ahead and started working on my on my wonky log cabins. This is the monster fabric that I picked up as a fat quarter bundle at Walmart several years ago. I love the bright and funny colors. And I just went crazy. I have a total of 12 for my quilt. I went ahead and ordered some lime green fabric from Joann's online. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things that's a surprise when you get here. Will it work? Will it not? It looked bright enough on my computer screen if it's not i'll just use it for other projects and i'll have to go into the store to purchase some but i thought i would because 12 blocks really isn't enough and i don't want to dig into the other i guess i could because i'm going to have to use the other fat quarter bundle to um to make the back of the quilt so maybe i will take a couple more of them i don't know i'm just going to see what it looks like how much fabric i have and see if i can do sashings and borders because i thought a a three by four with sashings and borders would be a really nice size for a child. I'll have to crunch all the numbers and see what it looks like. But I thought instead of putting, either way, it's gonna need sashing, instead of putting all these blocks side by side, which would work, but I think with the crazy colors and patterns, it would be nicer to set them off with the sashing strips. So if I decide to add more blocks, maybe I'll just do some narrow sashing and not worry about borders then, which would be fine too. Maybe I could do a four by five. I just don't wanna have to purchase more fabric for the back. This is what happens when you just play with fabric and you have no plan. Then you just kinda figure things out as you're going. But these were really fun to work on. I have a video up last Friday where I showed making these. It's a nice long video that everyone seemed to like. I had a lot of fun filming it too or recording it, however you want to call it. This one got some good wonk going, right? Because of this, I did end up having to have some of these little triangles, but you know, overall, I don't know, it doesn't bother me with the, the wonk going on just kind of makes it almost look like the roof of a house so that's what i worked on this week i i had so much fun that that new sewing machine which is it went through so nice and fast and i really like the feature that on the foot pedal if you push back with your heel it cuts the thread for you so you don't have to take your hands off your fabric and push buttons you can just keep going now i did not test out the little the knee lever there when i put it in I think I'm going to have to get some of that shelf lining mat or which put underneath rugs to hold the machine to the table a little better because as I was hitting it with my leg, it was just sliding on my desk. Now I do have it on a quilted mat, so I'm sure that's probably not helping it any. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It'll be fun just trying different things. This is what I had left over from the end of after I did my whole, I think I had 11 fat quarters. So it wasn't quite a full bundle, but this is what I had. I just went ahead and I started stitching them all together because on some of these at the end, I had to piece a couple blocks together just to get, 
just to get a strip that was long enough. I don't see one off the top of my head. Of course, when I want to look for something, you're not going to find it. Okay, here's one. I just went ahead and I pieced them together and I stuck them on there because I thought, well, you know what? It's really not going to matter with all this crazy wonkiness anyway. Let me just go ahead and piece the strips together. At that point, I wasn't planning on using any more of the fat quarters to do the back. I thought I would find some fabric on Joann's, but by the time I got done buying, I had to buy interfacing and I had to buy the lime fabric and then uh, batting was on sale. So I picked up five yards of batting and I was keeping myself within a budget. There just wasn't more money to buy backing or I just didn't want to spend more money to buy backing. And I still have all of these left. So I'll probably go ahead and just make some type of a large lock cabinish crumb block or something just something fun as a wall hanging or something the colors are all bright and colorful it would be really fine it'd be really cute in a kid's room or just to have maybe i'll just hang it on my little mini quilt wall well now you've seen what i've worked on this week now you can tell me down below in the comments what you guys have been working on are you guys it's getting crunch time a little bit for me here for christmas crafting has anyone else started making some projects I know a lot of people wait until right after Thanksgiving and then go crazy with all their crafting, but I tend to, as you see, have too many projects going on at once, so I need to start mine a little bit earlier. All right, guys, you guys have a great week. I hope you get some crafting time in. Enjoy the beautiful weather you're having with all those leaves that are changing colors. I am so jealous that we don't have leaves down here. Our leaves are green year-round. I would love to see some fall colors. See you guys next time. Bye.